Welcome to Old Man Gaming, the series where I nerd out on video games from my Gen X youth starting with early platforms like Pong and the TRS-80 through today with Xbox and PlayStation. In this episode, I'm going to be using my Intellivision flashback console to play Intellivision Golf, which might seem like an unusual choice, but my affection for this game will become clear here in a moment. When the Atari 2600 launched in September of 1977 and was a success, lots of other companies tried to get into this new cartridge-based home video game market. Mattel was among those companies, and they decided to use a more sophisticated chipset to give them better graphics they could use in marketing against Atari. The result was a better but more expensive experience. From my video on Skydiver for the Atari 2600, link in the description, that base system launched in 77 for a retail price of about $190, which is about equivalent to $850 today. By contrast, when Mattel launched the Intellivision in 1979, it went for $275 because of that chipset. And that's about $1,030 today, and that's why I didn't get one until after the video game crash of 1983. My childhood best friend received an Intellivision from his stepdad a few years before I got mine. Here are his impressions, which you'll see were influenced by Mattel's marketing. So for you, why the Intellivision over the Atari? And what were the first set of games that you remember having? We got, we got five games. It came with one, which was the poker um, blackjack game that came with. And then we got golf, baseball, football, and sea battle were the other ones he bought. I preferred the Intellivision much more to the Atari. I was very thankful he bought the Intellivision. Nice. I thought it was a much better gaming system than Atari ever was. I had a ColecoVision later, so obviously the graphics are better with that one. But Intellivision-wise, in my opinion, it, it, it was hands down much better because yeah, you still had the, the block characters but at least they moved like humans as opposed yeah. to like when you look at atari baseball they got three of them together and they're like on a stick it's almost like foosball and and the intellivision one was not mattel used an aggressive ad campaign whose commercials showed the graphics side by side with atari they featured writer george plimpton here's one of those commercials with an original link to it in the description below i'll try almost anything so when Mattel Electronics asked me to compare their Intellivision games with Atari, I gave it a try. I compared Atari baseball with Intellivision and found Intellivision played much more like real baseball. Then I compared Atari football with Intellivision. Again, Intellivision played more like the real game. In my opinion, if you try them both, there's only one conclusion you can come to. Intellivision from Mattel Electronics. Early in television games leaned towards sports titles, like the ones shown in the TV commercials. The graphics and the unique controller made that super appealing. The Intellivision controller was polarizing. People either loved it like I did for the amount of control it gave you, or they hated it for the additional complexity. It had a disc at the bottom that enabled 16 directions by pressing the edges, twice the degree of motion of the Atari joystick. Four side buttons were available for different functions depending upon the game. But the real unique feature was a numeric keypad within which plastic overlays could be inserted to help a player understand what those buttons could be used for during a particular game. Baseball was by far the best example, and it enabled you to throw a ball among all nine fielding players of your choosing. The lean towards sports games included the first licensing agreements with pro leagues, but computer-controlled logic for something that complex still eluded coders of the time, so most of these sports games required two players. As an only child, that kind of sucked for me. The best in television sports game that only required one player was golf, which is why it's the subject of this video. Here's Atari Golf compared top to bottom with Intellivision Golf. And again, the comparison isn't particularly close. If you look carefully, you can see that visually, the Atari has much larger pixel sizes that are closer to the blockiness we had with earlier games like Pong. 
In contrast, the Intellivision had much smaller pixel sizes and a wider variety of colors, which enabled developers to create an experience closer to what would come later with the Nintendo Entertainment System. The Activision team would later find a workaround to the pixel size problem on the Atari hardware, and that was a part of why their games were so appealing, but that's a story for another video. Intellivision Golf was among the first titles available for the system when it debuted in 1979. The reproduced overlay shown here from NTV Funhouse, link in the description, alongside their archived manual, enabled a player to select the club with a keypad, then use the disc for direction, and the different side buttons for strength of swing, long, medium, or short. An overhead view of the hole was provided as well as a small inset showing your golfer in the upper left. A single press of a side button started the swing, and a second press could activate a hook, a straight shot, or a slice, depending upon your timing, as described here in the manual on the right-hand side. The manual also showed players distances of different clubs, and even loft relative to the trees, which gave the game a third dimension. I'll show you a flaw in these elaborate tables here in a moment, though. A nine-hole, 38-par course was provided, and while things like club selection and different swing strengths are commonplace among golf games today, this was pretty original for 1979. Let's get to the gameplay. So here's the default load screen for golf. Looks very similar to the ones for every other Intellivision game, which gave you this test pattern of colors, along the top there, and this presents language with what the game is. If this was a single player game, we could select the difficulty level here by pushing one of the buttons on the keypad, but because this is really a multiplayer game, uh, strictly speaking, we're gonna hit the disc here to move forward. We'll select the number of players, which right now is one, and we're presented with the first hole. On the left-hand side, you see that single stick that I'm able to move. That's the direction of my golfer. All golfers in Intellivision Golf are right-handed, and that white line is meant to represent my shoulders. So in this direction here, we're gonna be hitting the ball from left to right. Now notice right here, there's some trees that we wanna to try to avoid. Um, in the, the stick figure that's in the upper left, once I select the club, which here I'm gonna select the driver, if I push one of the distance buttons, either long, medium, or short, the swing will start. If I want to try to hook a shot, I'll hit the button again towards the top of the swing. If I want it to go straight towards the bottom, and if I want it to slice, I'll hit it after it's reached the bottom. So I'm going to try to hook here. Push the button a second time, and I get a nice curve here that goes up, above, and beyond. Now, it's not clear right now if I'm on the green or if I'm in the rough. And if I'm in the rough, I can't hit a wood here. So I'm gonna hit a three iron. I'm gonna try to hook this as much as possible to get it closer to the hole. And I've got a long putt here. But if I hook this putt, I might be able to get it in. And I did, and because I got par, the crowd goes wild. And here in hole two, notice that we've got some tree placement here. One of the cool things about this game is that it always varied where the tree placement was. So every time you played it, it was just a little bit different. I ought to be able to hit over these with the driver, but let's see if I can do it. Nope. So I hit that tree and it bounced back onto the fairway. I can only hit a driver on the tee shot. Now if I want to, the longest club I have here is a three wood. So I'm going to hit this and I'm going to try to slice it towards that sand trap. So that was pretty good after recovering from our tree shot. Let's hit a three wood again and hook a little bit so that we don't hit the ball into the water. Now we've got a relatively straight shot down to the green. We've got to watch out for that tree. So let's try something smaller, more like a nine iron here. And we're gonna to try to slice it around this tree. Got over the tree nicely, 
and onto the green. I will try a long putt. And because we went over par, we don't get any cheers from the crowd. Here on hole three, the trick is to try to get your tee shot between these two sand traps. So I'm going to select a driver and I'm going to slice it just a little bit. I slice too much and find myself in the sand trap. Irons are the only thing that work in sand trap. I'm going to take my longest iron, the three iron, and try to get out of here. I got out, but I was still restricted a little bit on my length. But now that I'm on the fairway, I can hit a wood again. I'm going to hit the three and try to slice around that tree. And I unfortunately end up in the sand trap again. Now we're close enough that I could try a pitching wedge. And I'll go short here with the short button. Try to hit this straight. Now I might be able to make this long putt for par. Hole four, now the tricky part on this tee shot is to try to get the ball right between the sand trap and that water feature. Maybe just a little bit of a hook. We made it. So we ought to be able to hit a three wood over that tree. We are. We managed to avoid the water hazard. And from here, let's try a three iron. That's probably a little bit too far to make in one putt, but we'll see if we can do it. Oh, just short. Now we can short putt this in for par. Hole five. Now this one, if we get a little bit greedy here, you can usually hit five iron over this tree. But you know what? I'm going to hit it and just try to hook it. From here, I can hit a three wood my approach shot to the green. Now maybe a nine iron, medium I'm gonna say. Try to slice this just a little bit to try to straighten it out. Oh, so close. Now we should have an easy putt here. For par. Hole six. Now this one, the tricky thing is we want to go and hit, instead of a driver, we're going to hit a three wood. But I know from playing this enough that the driver is going to put us into that sand trap where the three wood will put us just short. Slice it just a little bit if I can. Ended up hitting it straight by accident. I'll take it. Hit another three wood to get us closer. And now we're maybe in that nine iron distance again. Well, I sliced that just a little bit, so I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make this in one long putt. Probably not. Nope. But now one medium putt ought to do it. And I'm over par on this one. Hole seven, I'm going to hit a three wood because if you hit a driver, you're going to land in the on the green, but too far away to one putt it. Whereas if you hit a three wood here, you've got a chance with the sand wedge to get it in. So I'm going to slice this just a little bit. And now I'm going to hit the wedge. Medium. Did not get lucky, but I've got a nice medium putt here for par. And the crowd goes wild. Hole eight is a little tricky because you got to take this shallow with the driver and go around these trees. Put myself pretty far back. Try to find my way back with a three wood. 
Oh, and I'm almost off. I did. I went off the screen as a penalty stroke. Man. Get this straight or maybe a little bit of a hook to prevent it from doing that again. Just sort of the bunker there. Let's do a three wood again. I'm going to be into the rough over here. Man, I'm stinking this one up. Let's try that nine iron. Or maybe a seven iron and go long with it. And try to hook this. That's just terrible. I'm short of the green. I'm going to go short on my wedge here. It should leave me with a makeable putt here. And that one's just terrible. I did an eight. Final hole, we're going to hit a driver here and slice it to get just near this water hazard. Now I'm going to show it to you so you can hear the water, the sound effect when you hit the water. You cannot clear this piece of, you cannot clear this water with a three wood. That's the water hazard effect, which I always love. But let's hit this three wood and slice it a little bit so we can try to curve ourselves around this tree. And of course I'm into that bunker. Let's try to three iron our way out of here. And I'm short, of course, because I was in the bunker. Let's try to seven iron this on the green. That might be makeable for a seven with a long putt. No, and I just missed. But now a short putt to complete the round. We end up scoring a 46, par is 38, really anything under 50 I'm happy with. While it took a lot of trial and error to figure out the club lengths, it was a lot more elaborate than its Atari equivalent and something that 13-year-old me could do by myself. 53-year-old me continues to find it challenging and fun even today. What about you? What do you remember about Intellivision video games from the late 70s and early 80s? Comment below. Follow me on Instagram for episode previews and other nerdy things. Link in the description. Please support the channel with a like and subscribe. That's it for this episode, but join me next time when I take a look at the original 1983 Star Wars coin-up game, which was not only a transformative experience to play, but is generally credited with being the first video game to contain movie dialogue. Thanks for watching.